today, the history of these successive assemblies is still little known. The surface of the planet has retained little evidence of these extremely ancient events. But at the University of Tucson in Arizona, one rather adventurous geologist has decided to investigate in order to reconstruct the various phases in the evolution of South America. He is Martin Bailey Pepper, a geologist and a motorbike fanatic. For several years, he has been exploring South America by bike, collecting unusual samples. Zircon, a mineral present in sand grains with the quality of being extremely stable. What I really love about geology is that you can pick up just, let's say, a handful of sand here. And as a geologist, using the right tools, you can get in and just look at a single grain like a zircon. And you can take that single grain and you can zoom into that and get a whole story of not only when this formed, but you can go back farther, what fluids were there before this fo formed. You can also go forward and figure out so much information about the time it took to slowly come out of the deep mantle as these rivers were moved more and more off the top of these mountains, bringing this up from hundreds of kilometers deep, finally getting it to the surface. There's so much information into one of these grains of sand. And yet, that's almost the biggest thing we have when we go back billions of years to figure out what happened to things in Rodinia or farther back to Colombia or farther back to the beginning of the Earth itself. Martin has already covered some 50,000 kilometers from Patagonia to Ecuador. He's collected more than 8,000 samples from almost every river across the continent. And so all I had to do was go into these river valleys with a gold pan, separate all the light minerals that I didn't want, and take just the zircon home. And it was those zircons that I could then take into our lab and analyze. Back in his laboratory in Tucson, each grain of sand is washed, filtered, then analyzed using a laser. This process provides the precise age and composition of each grain of zircon. Martin hopes he will soon be able to identify the origin of all the sediment, and thus retrace the geological history of Latin America over three billion years. There are still years of work to be done, but already the first results are promising. The geologist has discovered grains of sand from every part of the continent that are some 900 million years old. This would suggest that at the time, all the fragments of land that make up South America were all assembled together. When I think of the Earth, I like to envision it as almost like when you're cooking hot cocoa. And so you have the heat underneath the pot and that causes this upwelling current, this convection cell. And the continents are really just these little marshmallow bits that float around on all that convecting magma. On Earth, as we know it, we see these giant continents. But when you go back in time, a continent is composed of these stabilized blocks. And it's these blocks that will actually separate and collide in time. And scientists have dis discovered that these blocks separate and coalesce into these supercontinents about every four to 500 million years. And these blocks can completely disassociate from what we understand as North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. And so when we go to the time of Rodinia, the final assembly about 900 million years ago, many of these continental blocks that we would think of associated with South America looked completely different. They were kind of in the middle of this supercontinent, but they were separated. And so after 900 million years ago, as all these blocks started to be ripped apart, we then disassociated 
what's something we wouldn't even recognize. And then they started to coalesce into something that we could finally say, ha ha, that looks just like South America. 900 million years ago, the dislocation of a supercontinent would therefore have given rise to the future South America. The pieces of terrestrial crust that compose it began a long, common existence, and nothing would separate them. But subsequently, the continent would experience other dramatic changes. About 700 million years ago, the land masses of the southern hemisphere converged, and the future South America collided with the future Africa. This contact led to